Unity Sinu Indonesia Class Minor, magnitude 3.0, 17 minutes ago. Due to this uh, call, I'm so excited to finally see the Unity uh, Sinu because I'm excited for that. And uh, yeah, it might uh, happen. Uh, it looks like it will happen today, so very, very happy. Exactly. I mean, anytime there's a full stack, it's always an exciting day. Uh, also joining us is probably the only person I, one of only two people I know, I should say, that loves shuttle as much or more than I do. And that is Chris Berg. And how's it going, Chris? Hey, man. It's a mention show. Already marking the bingo cards off early, I guess. <laughs> yes, and exactly. I'm looking forward to this, by the way. This is going to be, hopefully, the last time we'll see these two out alongside the core launch. You never know. There's still things to do. There's points to be stacking again at some point for the bit of the stack of fire test, but this is exciting times. We're finally getting closer and closer, so uh, yeah, I'm very excited. Absolutely. That is the exciting part, is that we are getting closer. And of course, a shout out to Patrick, who will be behind the scenes today, helping to push the buttons and make sure the robots, which we can confirm are well fed, get these feeds out to you guys so we can watch this all happen. And as always, as a reminder, if you have any questions or anything you want to know, you can tag us at NASA Space Flight, and with a special program that we have here, that will show it to us, and we can pick those questions and show them on screen. So, starting things off here, we have Ship 24, uh, of course, ready to be lifted. So, we've seen some lifts before, but for those that uh, may not have seen, we've seen some lifts before, but for those that may not have seen, we've seen some lifts before, but for those that may not have seen, we've seen some lifts before, but for those that may not have seen, we've seen some lifts before. You're right, now see that the chopsticks, the chopsticks, the chopsticks already uh, are close to ship 24, the next one. System is good, sound is good. The 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 sound มีเลย30วินาทีอีกสแตริงอันชูอันยูร์สแตริงอันเอ็ดอันจายน์ไอน์ที่สิ่งที่มันพุ่งอยู่ในอันบิส You're hovering over it in your space cockpit. But however scared you might be, you still need to do your job. So you send your copter down to the surface of the red planet. Right, that's where you are, on Mars. But first things first, you take a moment to remember everything you know about the fourth planet from the sun. It's the last of the inner planets. Those are the planets that lie within the asteroid belt. They're also called terrestrial, since they're made up of rocks and metals. The atmosphere of Mars is much thinner than Earth's. It contains 95% carbon dioxide and a mere 1% of oxygen. In other words, don't even think about pulling off your helmet. Anyway, there's no time to waste. You land on the surface of the planet and find yourself in a brownish red room. That's a good thing you're wearing a spacesuit. This place is freezing cold. The thermometer sewn into the sleeve of your suit shows minus 80 degrees Fahrenheit. Time to take your first step on the Martian surface. The planet looks quite colorful, and the hue of a particular area depends on the minerals that make up the soil. The ground under your feet is covered in fine dust. It looks like rust. The same orange dust is in the air. Good thing you have your own supply of oxygen and don't need to breathe Martian air. The layer of this dust covering the surface of Mars can be from 6 to 40 feet thick. You hope you'll avoid getting swallowed by some Martian quicksand. You start walking, feeling very light. Mars is just 15% of our planet's volume and a mere 11% of Earth's mass. It means that gravity here is much weaker. Its pull is 38% as strong as the pull of gravity on the surface of Earth. 
you jump up and down and then try to run several hundred feet. Ah, you haven't even broken a sweater. What makes it harder for you to explore the place on foot is that the planet's surface is rocky and covered with craters and volcanoes, old dry lake beds, and canyons. You see something huge towering on the horizon, but you try to suppress your curiosity. You'll have enough time to figure out what it is later. Suddenly, a massive cloud appears in the distance. It looks as if a huge herd of horses is approaching you. In reality, you better get back into your copter and fly away as fast as you can. That's one of Mars's infamous dust storms. They mostly occur during the summer in the southern hemisphere of the red planet. They can sometimes cover the entire planet, and you see the largest ones from Earth. You hop into your copter and set a course for the eye that scared you so much. Winding channels that look like veins run through the eyeball. But the closer you get, the less it looks like an actual eye. Soon you realize it's a crater. It's giant, almost 19 miles across. Around the crater, which looks as if it has a pupil, there are other, even bigger craters. They likely formed billions of years ago. That's when Mars had to withstand multiple attacks of space rocks. But why is the eye crater darker than the surrounding landscape? Scientists think that once there was Martian water in the enormous pit. Remember those channels? They were likely carrying that water. And since the crater was filled with water, it stopped some substances and minerals from eroding away. Now, remember that towering something on the horizon? It's time to go and explore it. When you come close, you realize it's the largest shield volcano in the entire solar system, Olympus Mons. It's more than 370 miles in diameter, which is almost the same size as the state of Arizona. You tilt your head. Wow. The mountain is 16 miles high. It's also rimmed by four-mile-high cliffs. To picture the sheer size of the